Zambo and welcome to this short interview. Uh, let me introduce my guest. Uh, my guest tonight is the Honorable President of Asian Development Bank, Mr. Takiko Nakao. Uh, going by the list of uh, CV that was given to me, it might take the whole time to uh, complete the introduction because uh, Mr. Nakao is in a hurry that he'll have to rush for the airport. I'll have to limit the introduction to uh, some of the important uh, Post positions that uh, he did hold in uh, various span of career. Uh, before becoming the president of uh, ADB in April 2013, he was the vice minister for international affairs in the Ministry of Finance in Japan. And uh, he was also assigned as the minister uh, in the embassy of uh, Japan in the US. And uh, the list goes on, but I'll have to stop here because I have some serious questions to ask. Your Excellency, welcome to the program. Thank you very much for uh, uh, having this interview for me. I've been told mm. that this is your first visit to mm. Bhutan, so what was your reaction? I'm sure you must have heard of it. Yeah, Bhutan is a very popular country in the world because of uh, uh, gross uh, national wealth uh, index, and uh, it is uh, providing, uh, I mean, idea that uh, you should pass through the happiness instead of just the production or the consumption. But uh, I have never been there, so this is a very good opportunity for me to come here. And uh, I met uh, Prime Minister uh, Tobgay and uh, Finance Minister Doruchi and other ministers, and uh, we had a, a very good discussion. Yes. Your Excellency, now, you came here to inaugurate the resident mission of ADB here mm -hmm. in Bhutan. Mm -hmm. Why do you feel the need of uh, having a resident mission in Bhutan at this time, after 30 years of partnership that Bhutan had with ADB? In a sense, uh, it is strange that we haven't had a resident mission here for 31 years, uh, since uh, was 32 years, uh, because uh, the Bhutan became member in 1982. We have had a lot of operations in these countries. In a sense, we should have had uh, the resident mission earlier, but uh, because of uh, uh, the uh, shortage of uh, human resources on our side, we couldn't. But this time, we found a very good, uh, uh, I mean, a resident mission uh, country director, and we decided to have this one. And uh, I'm very happy to do that. Your Excellency, what about uh, your impression on the development that uh, Bhutan initiated so far, especially when it comes to the partnership that Bhutan developed uh, with ADB and ADB's uh, assistance to Bhutan's development? Uh, in short, I think uh, it is uh, progressing very well, and I'm in impressed by the level of achievement of uh, the uh, growth uh, so far, uh, uh, a very high uh, robust growth. Of course, uh, it is a volatile uh, changing from year to year because of electricity productions and other reasons. But overall, uh, it has uh, kept a uh, very robust growth. And also, it has achieved a lot of uh, poverty reductions. Uh, the poverty, uh, uh, poor people uh, reduced, number of poor people reduced. And also, uh, the literacy uh, rate is coming up and the enrollment in the school uh, is uh, uh, almost uh, near uh, the 100%. And in medical areas, uh, there have been a lot of <coughs> progress. Uh, so overall, uh, uh, the uh, uh, progress or development of uh, the uh, Bhutan economy, including poverty reduction and other social uh, areas, uh, is uh, remarkable. Yes. Your Excellency, now, how do you choose the areas of assistance from uh, ADB side? Mm -hmm. There are so many areas that Bhutan want to, uh, or need assistance. The areas that uh, you specifically choose for assistance? Yeah, uh, we have uh, uh, already uh, provided uh, about $340 million of uh, uh, loans, mostly uh, concessional loan without uh, any interest rate, although we charge some fees, and also $140 million of grants uh, so far since 1982. And our focus has been a road because connectivity is important between cities and rural areas and also the urban development and rural developments, uh, and also, uh, of course, uh, power sectors like hydro, uh, hydropower. So our focus has been in those areas. And uh, uh, some other uh, donors, like uh, the World Bank, uh, uh, do, are doing more about the social sector, and uh, the Japanese uh, JICA is uh, uh, looking at the uh, uh, road sector especially. So we are working together, so our selection of a focus can be in coordination with other donors. But uh, going forward, of course, uh, 
uh, we can uh, develop further the uh, areas of uh, uh, the power and uh, urban development and how we can save uh, energy to uh, how uh, we, uh, uh, the, we can achieve a sustainable uh, development in terms of uh, environment protection and so on. So there are many areas, but overall uh, we'll uh, talk with the uh, government uh, what kind of areas we can focus on. And uh, we would like to actively join the discussions of our uh, next uh, five years uh, program of these countries. Our assistance will be coordinated with that kind of program. There was so much of talk about, uh, that was pre-election and post-election talk about uh, Bhutan not being able to manage the debts, national debts that we have. And ADB is one of the donor agencies or one of the lenders that uh, Bhutan has. And people here are a bit worried as to whether we would be able to repay the loans on time or not. Mm -hmm. What would be your assessment? The uh, other loans uh, you're getting from other countries, it may not be a concession, but our loan itself is a concession from uh, Asian Development Fund. And, uh, so because it's concessional, you think it's manageable it's, uh, to pay it's on time? It's easier, easier yeah, to, to repay. And about the level of debt, uh, uh, the debt to GDP ratio is like 70% uh, uh, of the GDP. And it's uh, qu quite high. But in other countries, uh, debt to GDP ratio is even higher. So in my view, uh, uh, it is manageable uh, because uh, the level is not so extremely high compared to other countries. And also, uh, your debt is uh, mostly related to the borrowing for the investment in the hydropower. So there is a backup of uh, backing of uh, future revenues. So if uh, you can produce electricity as planned, and if you can supply those things to India and other, uh, uh, I mean, uh, 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 other areas, I think uh, uh, it will be OK. So what is important is uh, to manage uh, the macroeconomy well, and also to uh, implement the uh, hydro energy project well. And I think in that way, I think uh, the, it's OK uh, for Bhutan to repay the debt. Uh, Your Excellency, you have assumed the office of Asian Development Bank at a very interesting time. Mm. And when the world is talking about recession, mm. and when the world is talking about economic meltdown, mm. you have assumed an office of a very important institution. Mm. Was it challenging for you to operate? Oh, there is a lot of discussion about uh, the impact of uh, the uh, uh, strength, uh, impact of uh, tapering off of uh, Federal Reserve uh, monetary policy which is a tightening of uh, monetary, uh, money supply to, to the world. And uh, it might cause uh, the uh, uh, money outflow from uh, emerging economies to the advanced economies. And it might cause the trouble to the emerging economies. That is the question. Uh, and uh, some uh, people, including uh, officials of emerging economies, uh, are worried about it and uh, uh, blaming that uh, it might cause a trouble to the emerging economies. But in my view, uh, the reasons uh, there will be a tapering off of uh, monetary policy, monetary easing, is because the American uh, economy is now picking up. It's becoming better. Uh, it would uh, maybe uh, uh, provide a good opportunity for emerging economies. Also, Japanese economy is now picking up. and. Uh, uh, actually, BOJ, uh, Bank of Japan, is uh, adopting a very uh, uh, loose monetary policy, easy monetary policy. And uh, the European Union, or Euro area, uh, has uh, improved. So overall, the advanced economy situation is better than before. So that is the reasons of uh, some monetary uh, tightening of uh, advanced economies. So I don't think uh, it would cause uh, a serious trouble to emerging economies. If uh, emerging economies uh, can convince the market they will con uh, that they will uh, pursue the sound uh, macroeconomic policies, and also uh, implement uh, needed uh, structural reforms like uh, liberalizations of trade and investment regimes. Yes. Your Excellency, now you're talking about overall improvement in our economy. Have you heard of Bhutanese economy, especially in relation to the balance of payment that we have to deal with uh, India? Oh, yes, uh, uh, because uh, Bhutan's economy is now booming and consuming a lot. Uh, there is a lot of import, and uh, compared to the export, import is larger. So about 20% of uh, deficit of uh, trade uh, uh, to GDP. It's very high. But uh, uh, it is also because uh, there is a lot of uh, needs for import to invest in the hydro uh, 
uh, uh, plant. So there is a reason for a trade deficit. But of course, uh, the Bhutan's economy uh, should be uh, uh, careful about uh, the management of a trade deficit. Uh, so, uh, uh, because uh, the uh, uh, shortage of liquidity of uh, rupee vis-à-vis -vis India is uh, because of a balance of payments uh, problem, because of uh, too much uh, import uh, compared to the export. So, <coughs> the, uh, maybe uh, some tightening is important uh, about the uh, consumptions uh, and also investment in uh, residential, uh, residential uh, areas, uh, houses. Uh, that kind of tightening is important to cartel the import. And also, uh, in the long term, uh, uh, the uh, Bhutan economy should uh, uh, have a more competitive export sector and should have uh, the uh, uh, import substitutions. Uh, export, about export, of course, uh, the uh, electricity is important, but if uh, uh, the Bhutan economy uh, can find some ways to uh, have a competitive uh, industry like uh, uh, the uh, uh, I mean agro uh, agri business uh, uh, and uh, the tourism is uh, one of uh, can be one of a uh, service export. So those areas should be promoted. And also, if uh, you can find an uh, import substitute, uh, you are now importing a lot of things from India and other countries. But there can be areas uh, you can uh, promote uh, your own industry in uh, Bhutan instead of uh, continuing to import. So uh, basically, uh, liquidity shortage of rupiah is related to the balance of payment issues. So how you can uh, address those issues, uh, try to curtail the import and try to promote export. If you think that the question is too political in nature, Your Excellency, you can opt to leave it out. But uh, as an economist, what do you think? Is it the right move to uh, inject so much of money into the economy when the growth is quite uh, reasonable? As I said, uh, the uh, Bhutan economy is uh, facing uh, difficulty of a balance of uh, payments, so they should uh, cartel, uh, uh, reduce the demand uh, uh, compared to the uh, uh, supply. So uh, it means uh, uh, they, they should pass through sound uh, uh, fiscal policy too. So I, I don't ha have a, uh, specific ideas whether the uh, uh, policy agenda of uh, the government is right or not. We should look at it carefully. But uh, I hope that the uh, government will continue to pass uh, sound economic policies. And so far, uh, it, it, uh, the policy has been very I mean, healthy and sound. Uh, fiscal deficit is small, and revenue is large compared to the GDP. Tax revenue is uh, large. So, uh, so far, I, I think it has been okay, but uh, I hope the government will continue to pass uh, uh, appropriate uh, macro policies. Your Excellency, now one of the concerns that we here in Bhutan have is more than as a journalist, even as a citizen of this country, the concern we have is that uh, uh, donor countries or institutions like ADB are trying to withdraw their support to Bhutan or assistance to Bhutan because of the growth rate that we are achieving or because of the pace of development that we are having. We are really concerned. What about ADB now? Uh, yeah, but regarding uh, the overall uh, performance of uh, Bhutan, as I said, it has made a lot of progress. Uh, it has been remarkable. But at the same time, uh, the level of uh, per capita GDP uh, is still uh, $2,500 per uh, year uh, per capita. Uh, so it's uh, still uh, uh, per country. Uh, and uh, there is no reason that uh, the donors uh, will recede uh, our uh, I mean, uh, support to Bhutan. And especially because uh, Bhutan is a, a good uh, recipient in terms of uh, implementations of uh, their, I mean, uh, projects. Uh, uh, the uh, disbursement rate or the implementation rate of uh, uh, ADB support to Bhutan is much higher than the average of uh, our support to uh, countries. It means that the government is uh, so keen on implementing uh, the projects uh, they receive from donors. So. Uh, I would say I already talked to the, uh, uh, some members of donors, including the World Bank uh, representative and the uh, JICA representative. They uh, appreciate uh, the uh, efforts of the government very well. So <laughs> uh, the uh, I mean, uh, support to uh, uh, ODA to countries is based on the efforts of uh, ownership of uh, the Bhutan. In that regard, uh, Bhutan is a very good country to continue our support. Your Excellency, final question, now that you'll have to uh, leave shortly, final question would be your advice to our government 
to Bhutan on the economic situation that we have and the ways that we should initiate to deal with the economic situation? Yeah. Uh, yesterday, I had the opportunities of talking with the uh, Excellency uh, 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 Tobge uh, three times a day. And uh, we share the view that, uh, uh, of course, uh, we must uh, take care of uh, short-term issues, but uh, to achieve uh, development and happiness of the countries, uh, it is really important to uh, continue to look at the uh, reforms in many uh, respects and uh, keep an uh, open trade and investment uh, uh, regime to invite uh, the investment in this country, to educate people, uh, to have a better education for people, that is the best way to enhance productivity and to have a higher income and to keep uh, uh, environment, uh, maintain the environment well because uh, this is uh, such a, uh, I mean, nature abundant country. And uh, one of uh, the advantages of this country is a beautiful nature with the, uh, many heritages. By maintaining well uh, those heritages and also protect the environment well, uh, it provides a lot of opportunities like uh, tourism and uh, others. So uh, uh, sustainable development, uh, environmentally friendly development is important. There is no one easy solution to this country. But uh, so far, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, under the uh, uh, leadership of uh, uh, King and also under the leadership of uh, Prime Ministers and others, this country has uh, achieved a lot. So it's important to continue uh, this kind of environment in which uh, uh, the gov governance is strong, no corruptions, uh, investment uh, climate is uh, well uh, maintained and the environment is well maintained. It's really important to uh, continue this kind of uh, uh, good practices in, the, in this country. Your Excellency, thank you so much for your time. It's a pleasure talking to you. With this, we come to the end of our interview. That was Mr. Takiko Nakao, who is the Honorable President of Asian Development Bank and the Chairperson of ADB's Board of Directors. Thank you so much for watching and good night.